uh, Patrick, thank you for joining me today and um, all our turning left for left readers and uh, listeners on YouTube. So, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful um, that you've asked me to be a part of this. As you know, I I've, I've, have read your blog probably since the beginning, uh, even before you and I uh, met, which was through this blog and through uh, another uh, social media group that we have that you have on Facebook, along with a couple of other people that you moderate. And so uh, then we eventually got to meet. So I'm just thrilled to death to be here today. Well, it's great to chat to you, Patrick. And um, for those that don't know it, Patrick's a good friend of mine. He um, is a very frequent flyer in normal times. Um, <laughs> And he's a, normally a regular in the Concord room that you can see behind me here. Uh, sadly, I'm sitting at home, but I thought it'd be a nice little reminder for Patrick, one of his um, fa favorite places when he's traveling. Um, so Patrick, tell people where, where they may have seen you before because um, you, you're actually on TV. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I've got, a, I've got an interesting background, which I'm sure we'll get into of how I even started flying because before I even, did this television presenting work. Uh, I used to fly quite a bit in an old job that I had before this. And, uh, but yes, I uh, used to be a management consultant. And about 10 years ago, I gave that up. Uh, I decided I wanted to do something a little bit more creative and definitely a lot more fun. Although I did, I did love the managing, management consulting. And it's what brought me over here to Europe. I'm, I'm based in London, but as you can tell from my funny accent, um, that I'm not originally from these here parts. Uh, and, and so about 10 years ago, I gave up, gave up the consulting to go into TV presenting, which I had never done before. <laughs> and uh, my friends, my family, my partner, everyone thought I was a little cuckoo uh, crazy for giving up such a good job. Uh, with the consulting work. But again, I just, I kind of listened to that inner voice and I wanted to do something fun. So I decided TV presenting and I wasn't really specific to the world when I threw it out there. Um, and about a year later, uh, I got, I, I was given an opportunity to uh, do some teleshopping, uh, specifically with QVC, which is the largest uh, television shopping channel in the world. And they are all over the world. And uh, I, when that opportunity came up, I kind of went, oh, I don't know if that's the TV presenting that, I, that my inner voice was telling me. And I remember saying that to my partner and he said, well, you weren't very specific about it. You just kind of threw it out in the world and this landed, so give it a try. And man, oh man, I am so glad I did. I have not looked back. I've been doing it for just over nine years now. And, uh, it's, it's great. I've somehow developed a niche for myself as kind of the go-to guy when you need something, when brands need a representative to go on air and pitch their products and sell them. Uh, I'm that guy. And I've worked with several teleshopping channels, primarily with QVC. And I've done it everywhere from France to Italy to uh, the UK to Canada and in my home country, uh, America. So that, that, and uh, up until this nasty virus hit us, I'd say for the last three plus years, I've been, I was traveling, oh, at least once every three weeks, and probably 85% of that was long haul to somewhere in North America. And that, that is how I got my status <laughs> uh, with it, or this go around with the airlines. So, and I love traveling, but, but of course that's all changed since the pandemic hit. Yes, sadly so. So going back to, you, you said um, you've had this sort of love of travel, but partly through um, need <clears throat> in jobs, but what started your love of travel um, and aviation originally? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so I, you know, I, we were one of those, when I was growing up, we were one of those families in America. And at that time it was probably 8.5% of Americans had passports. <laughs> we, were, we were actually uh, one of those families who had passports. So I was very, very, uh, I'm very grateful I was able to start flying uh, with my family as a young kid. I remember 
you know, some of my earlier flights or remember going on Delta or whatever it was at that time. And where if you were a child and you came on board, they gave you the little wings pin. It was a plastic pin. And, and so I, I, I remember getting that on my first flight and it was so cool. I mean, I, you know, I thought I had this special emblem, this special card, special wings uh, that made me special. And, and I, I don't know, it just felt so wonderful to be up in the air. I also remember on those early flights that, uh, you know, if you had kids, they would give you cards and you didn't have to pay for them <laughs> in duty free or through the trolley. And uh, you would get branded a branded deck of cards. So my brother and I would play cards on flights and, and it was just, I, it was just the coolest thing. And, and I don't even remember how old I was uh, when that happened, but, but I knew I loved it. And uh, I knew whatever I did in my life from that point on, that it had to involve travel and, and specifically travel with flying involved with it. And uh, those dreams came true, but that that was really where it started. So, in in all your experiences, is there a particular um, flight that stands out in your mind as being either one of the best or the most fun? Yeah. So, um, you you of course know me very well, Michelle. And fun is my middle name. <laughs> uh, it's it's what I'm all about. I mean, for the road warriors who are watching this. Um, whether you're a road warrior who's flying all of the time and you've got status with an airline or you're someone who just loves to fly and you're, you're uh, looking to achieve that status, um, it, uh, it, 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 for me, when you're in the air, it's, it's about making it as easy as possible, but also as fun as possible. I'd say that I have a couple of memorable flights uh, for me. Uh, the first was when I, my first international flight, so going from America here to London, I believe it was London, uh, and uh, not my first flight, but my first flight flying business class or better, <laughs> was on Transworld Airlines, TWA. And uh, that, I just remember being on a 747 for the first time with the lounge upstairs uh, it was definitely, you know, I'm not talking about the 50s or 60s. This would have been the late 80s, the early 90s uh, for that first business class premium flight. But I remember just everything about it from going, to, you know, showing up, being invited into the lounge, having an open bar <laughs> in that lounge. <laughs> I'm like, woohoo! <laughs> and um, anyone who knows me knows I love bubbles a lot. And uh, any type of bubbles, I'm not, I'm not uh, snobby about it. But, but I remember that and then being invited onto the plane, you know, the first, in the first group. And then going on the plane and then having that lounge in a 747, which is definitely my favorite aircraft and probably always will be my favorite aircraft. And, and just that whole experience, uh, even down that use, even at that time period, they were still doing trolley service. You know, I remember the trolley being uh, after, uh, after dinner or after the meal being stripped and then cheese being put on it with ports and after dinner drinks. And I remember going, oh, holy moly, I, I can get used to this. <laughs> so, so and, and it was TWA. I mean, you know, and at that time, they were one of the leaders. I mean, it wasn't, nowadays, there's so much, but there's better food, there's better, uh, better seats, uh, there are better electronics, there's all of that. But, but it really was that end of what, I, I think people who are older than I would say was the end of the golden era of travel. And, uh, you know, if I didn't love traveling then, uh, I certainly did at that point after that flight. Um, it was a dangerous flight, though, because as you know, once you turn left, <laughs> you don't ever want to go right again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you want to you want to hear <laughs> you want to hear the real glass <laughs> and everything but it but it was it, it was a great experience so that that was uh probably one of the most memorable flights another memorable one was going on air france uh, uh oh gosh maybe 14 something years ago and going on a 380 
for the first time. That that was uh, a great experience. The air quality was different. The, the sound was different. The experience of takeoff and and landing was different. The lighting, you know, I remember sleeping so well from New York or Atlanta. I think I flew at, from Atlanta to Paris on that one. So that that was extremely memorable, also. Um, and I'd have to say, any time that I've been fortunate enough. Uh, because I don't always travel up front. I'm not always turning left, you know, um, for more or for less. Uh, but but anytime I am uh, able to fly up front, and specifically when I've been able to fly up front for uh, to fly first class with British Airways and to experience that, and specifically in a 747, in my favorite seat. Uh, which is 1K. I'm I'm right-handed, so that allowed me to put my champagne glass <laughs> to the right <laughs> and easily reach that uh, without much effort. So so that those would be the ones, and then even more specifically, probably my favorite ever 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 flight was my last 747 flight on January 24th, 2020, um, just a year ago with through our group on Facebook. Um, there were four of us who went to Vegas together. I knew one of the pre people on that with the group that I went with very well. Um, I knew another one I had met and then I had not met the fourth one. And we all met, did the lounge crawl at Terminal 3 uh, out at Heathrow uh, and then boarded our flight and it was, it was so much fun uh, to be flying with other people because usually I fly on my own for work. And, uh, and you know, we caused a little bit of havoc while we were on the flight. We drank them of all of their uh, Laurent Perrier Grand Sickle and, and ate them out of every bonbon they had. And uh, we had a heck of a fun time. So that was probably my favorite, favorite flight of all time. Yeah, it became something of an infamous flight in frequent flying circles. <laughs> I think um, something to do with a disco ball, Patrick. <laughs> do you know well, it, well, I do. You know, they they ended up calling it Disco Gate um, <laughs> afterwards, which I I found hysterical and I thought was great. And it, it's wonderful that other people have a sense of humor. Uh, like I do. Yeah, that um, that all started. It's actually a fun story in in the Facebook group that we belong to when uh, other members saw that we were getting on this because we opened it up to everyone. We said we're going to Vegas and anyone in that group, you know, several hundred members were, were like, here's when we're going. And uh, there were a few other people who were on the flight in club class and all that. But uh, the four of us were up front. And on that flight, there was actually, there were only other two other people who were in first originally booked for that flight. And then last minute at the airport, there were three other people who showed up in first class, not with us. And um, uh, they were a very wealthy older couple. They had their security guard with them, <laughs> a, a big strapping guy. And, and, uh, and they had been traveling around. They decided last minute, that they were going to go to Vegas and they ended up on our flight. So I can only imagine what they paid for that ticket. But uh, in our group, someone had said, uh, I'm, I'm, then, as you know, I, if you dare me to do something, I'll probably do it. And someone had said, oh my gosh, you should turn first class into a disco. And uh, you should take a disco ball with you. And I went, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and I thought, hmm. Now, how in the world do you get a disco ball installed on a BA flight and a 747 down below under the pilot and everything? But uh, some of our helpful members actually told me about a mini USB disco ball. I'm going to show you right here since we have the joy of video to do this. And um, as you can see, it wasn't a huge disco ball by any means, but if you Put it into your iPhone or computer <laughs> and then you turn the music on it will beat to the music so we we had this little disco ball now I do have to say this did turn into a big thing because the, uh, someone shot a video of it and then it ended up being lifted from our 
you know, our fun group page and put in some other groups and then we got trolled and all of that. And I, I will say that uh, before we even did that, uh, we went to the crew. We also went to the other members uh, who were in first class who were already joining our party because they saw how much fun we were, uh, except for one person who slept the entire flight <laughs> to Vegas. So, um, you know, they, we, we asked everyone, we said, we just want to do a little video on this and have some fun. And uh, ding, dang, dong, there we were, we did it. And uh, we had a great time. It was, it was interesting because Afterwards, the couple with their security guard wanted to know where we were staying. They wanted to hang out with us in, in Vegas. <laughs> and they said, you guys are so much fun. And this is probably one of the most fun flights that we've ever taken. So um, yeah, it was, it was a great time. Disco Ball Gate 2020. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what a great way to finish um, your flying really for, <laughs> for the time being. But for 747, <laughs> yes come back to your future plans in a minute but um you've talked a lot about British Airways and I know that you're a gold guest list member with them so Correct. obviously you fly with them a lot is there another airline that you also like as well as British Airways are you very loyal to BA so I'm 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 a real point junkie um you know <laughs> uh, chasing that status <clears throat> When you fly as much as, as I've been flying through the last few years, you want that to be a seamless experience, experience or as seamless as, as possible. And, and of course, when you have status with an airline, uh, that certainly helps, especially, you know, with me flying to the States and specifically to the East Coast a lot. I was just looking, you know, this week they're having a huge snowstorm in New York and Philadelphia, which, and DC, which were the cities I fly to, that I fly to the most. And uh, I used to have to book those flights at this time of year, flying out at least a day and a half to two days before, because I never knew when I booked them, what the weather would be like. Um, so when you have that status, uh, if there are those last minute things, it really helps with, with any hiccups that come along the way. But I, with that being said, I, uh, I love the Virgin product. You know, I, it, it's, it's so rock and roll. It's everything they, from their very beginning that Richard Branson wanted to do, um, it's just sexy. You know, the, the crew are incredible. Um, the experience is wonderful. If you're fortunate enough to be able to fly in um, uh, upper class, which I've done a few times. I've also, I, I've flown all over in all segments of that, sections of that plane, just like I have BA. Um, but when you can do that and go to the, as you've written wonderfully about in the past, to go to the clubhouse at Heathrow or at JFK, it's just an amazing experience that is so fun. And, and when I'm on my, that's the one flight, the one airline that when I'm on my own, I, I just feel so elated and, and high, you know? I mean, there's just this, this buzz and it's the one time that I'm, when I'm with them that I'm like, gosh, I wish I were sharing this with someone else, you know, whether it's my partner or a group of friends. Um, and, and I probably would have chased status with them and I have been gold with them. Um, I would chase status except because I was flying a lot in, I've been flying a lot in Europe to France, to Italy. And when I talk about my past where I was flying, um, uh, BA covered all of that, transatlantic plus, uh, plus Europe. And so it just made sense in order to, to get the points. And I, I, again, I'm a point junkie. I like using those. I, when I lived in America, I was uh, platinum or whatever it was called whatever the level, the highest level was with uh, Delta. I'm from New York City, but before I moved here 20 years ago, I was based in Florida over by Sanibel Island, Fort Myers, Naples area on the West Coast. And, and that's all Delta land, you know, you, you go. And, and I was flying weekly then as a management consultant. So every Sunday night or Monday morning, I get on a plane and it would take me up to Atlanta. I would connect to wherever I had to go in the States. Sometimes I'd fly to other clients during the week, and then on Thursday or Friday I would fly back home. So, so I, I they they're great 
if you have status as well. I remember when they rolled out Business Elite in 1998, 1999, um, what that was all like for international. So yeah, those, the, uh, you know, I, I do stick with BA simply to keep the status, uh, but, uh, you know, hey, listen, just put me up in the air in that tin, that long tin tube and, uh, or not tin, but metal tube. And uh, it doesn't matter what the wing coat and the wing paint looks like. I am, I am as close to heaven, literally, as you can get. <laughs> That's very true. Um, so uh, just going back down to earth slightly, is there a particular airport? I don't mean the destination, but the actual airport that you really look forward to flying through when you know you've got to fly from or into that airport is the one that you think is like the, you know, the perfect airport? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I've never thought about that. Um, I know which ones I don't like flying into okay. <laughs> <laughs> because they, you know, because luggage takes too long or there's so much footprint that you have to, um, to cover. Um, I, you know, I have to say, thinking about it right now, since you've asked me, I, Heathrow, you know, Terminal 5, uh, BA's home, uh, you know, when they did that, sure, they had some growing teething problems when it first started, but but I love it. And just, and, and they didn't rest on their laurels. I mean, that airport's, Terminal Five's not that old, but when you look at what they've done since then, um, with, with the first, you know, with, with going through the first uh, uh, gate and being able to go directly into the lounge from there, into your own security lane. Um, you know, the, the way the baggage uh, gets, I've, I've really honestly never had, with all of the flying I've done, I've never had a problem at Heathrow with baggage at all. Um, I love the tunnel down below. If you don't want to, you know, take the tram, the tram is great. But if you want to do the tunnel, sometimes after getting off an overnight flight and I need to wake up, it's great. The lighting down there is really cool. Um, I will say as a Gold Guest List member, there have been several times coming off of JFK flights or LA flights where I've done gone for work, uh, where I've gotten off the flight and they've greeted me at the... Uh, at the gate or at the, you know, when I've stepped off the plane, they put me in a buggy and then they've taken me in the tunnels down uh, or, or they've, if it's been curbside, they put me in a car and taken me uh, then to get in the tunnel if we're a remote terminal and, and all of that, that's so cool. So I think, yeah, I think that I'd have to say that's one of my most enjoyable to go through and then you you throw in the Concord room, you throw in the gold lounge, heck you throw in either of the galleries lounges, which I think are phenomenal. You know, we in America do not have lounges um, like we do here in, in Europe. Real question, How, what, yeah. what's one of your airports that you like? Um, funny, as I was asking the question, I was thinking that. I like Terminal 3 at Heathrow because of the, the whole lounge hopping thing. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I would say I'm not keen on Terminal 3. Um, I was thinking actually Hong Kong. I, I like Hong Kong because uh, the lounges, the cafe lounges are really nice and quite unique with the like the, the right. baths that you get in the cabanas. Um, and quite often I've had a buggy but I, don't, I have no idea why but it's when I've been in first they've picked me up in a buggy and taken me though I hate nice. it's so big and it just can you know you feel like you've hiked several miles to get to your gate which uh, Singapore is same it's a love-hate thing I love Singapore if you have a long layover because they've got the outdoor pool and just being out in the fresh air swimming right really indulgent after a long flight I love that and I love all the attractions and um, you know, there's a lot of nice greenery. It's an attractive airport, but I hate the distance and the fact everything's carpeted. It's just not designed for right. luggage at all. It's just right. a really, really hard work if you're dragging luggage along the carpet. But yeah, those are probably two of my favourites. I think mine are generally down to convenience. You know, how quick is it to get around? How's it laid out? Um, you know, are the decent lounges, that sort of thing. 
I like um, LA used to be terrible. I think it used to be such a bad airport, but since they redid it all, it's generally quite quick to get out of. They've got decent shops in the international terminal, and now they've got the lovely right. lounge, which I think is one of the best lounges it's, worldwide. I I totally agree. I I love when people post about their first experiences in the Qantas lounge. You know the the food, uh, the service is in incredible um the, you know you get a proper restaurant a really top-notch restaurant quality meal in there and and they're just so friendly yeah I, I i like that terminal too except it can take if they're busy it can take forever to get through security it's uh even with fast track that i've just never had much luck it's it's not an airport that i would rock up uh, at the last minute to, <laughs> uh, even with the new terminal, but, but yeah, it's so clean. It's fresh. It's very well lit. Yeah. Good choices. Good choices. <laughs> we should travel more together. <laughs> we should. Oh, we've never yeah. actually done it. So we should at some point. We're, I mean, we're going to yeah. hopefully be in Vegas together at the end of the year, but, um, That's right. yeah, at some point we'll have to do some, some actual flights together. I think that would be fun. That's right. I promise I won't bring the disco ball. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we can't have disco getting part two <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um move, moving on to status you've talked quite a bit about um status with virgin with british airways um do you think the airlines are doing enough given we're now in 21 where we all thought that pretty much we'd be mm. back to normal at this point actually travel's probably getting worse rather than better for the next few months do you think the airline should be doing more to help people keep their status? And if so, what, what should they be doing? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm very grateful that last year, you know, our, our status with pretty much all of the airlines, depending on, you know, regardless of who yours was and your viewers, your readers, uh, was it, you know, for the most part, uh, we were extended through this year. So that was great. Um, and, and, and I thought, I thought the right thing to do, but I also thought very gen it was also a very generous thing to do. Um, it also calmed me, you know, we're, the, for uh, those of us who love flying uh, and, and because we do spend money and, and time and, and not just time in the air, but time away from family, time away from loved ones, time away from our routines, um, that, that we really, I think people do, you know, you earn that when you, when you get that status and it's, it's something to be proud of. Um, and, uh, but, I, but I'm never cocky about that. I'm, I'm extremely grateful. Um, and uh, so here I was going, yes, I'll be able to make this. And I've booked, I mean, I've, I, I can't even tell you, I've got a pile of them because uh, I print them out, otherwise I'll forget of future travel vouchers and e-vouchers uh, for, for airlines um, that I've booked these flights and I haven't been able to take them because they've been canceled or, yeah, most, most of them have been canceled to tell you the truth or, or just uh, uh, we've gone into new lockdown measures uh, like we're currently in right now. So, uh, I, you know, I, yes, my, my tier year ends in November. Um, and my mind daily, <laughs> even though I'm not in the air, my mind daily uh, is thinking about how am I going to do that? And every time I get another flight that's canceled or that's changed and I do the quick tear points in my head, uh, I, you know, tick tock, tick tock. Um, it's, it, are we going to run out? Now, I was supposed to be in San Francisco a week ago. And of course, that all got changed. I was actually going to do some work, some social media stuff. So I technically could have gotten on that flight, but it just, it didn't feel right, you know, with, with the virus spreading. And it's something that I could, I can wait to do. Um, my next flight is May that I'm supposed to be going over to New York with, and I'm hoping it goes through, but who knows? Uh, and then I've got a flight for July 4th to go to LA and Palm Springs. Uh, and so uh, who knows if that's going to go because California keeps going in and out of lockdowns like we have. So add all of that to, and I've got something in August and I've got, you know, I, I kind of, if I had been able to do all the flights that I can uh, and that I've booked and, and those that I haven't booked, 
that I would have booked if we weren't in this, I, I would have made go guest list again. So um, that doesn't make me special or anything. It's just, just a fact. And uh, so it would be nice. Uh, I, I would love to see the airlines make a move on this now. <laughs> it would calm me down a little bit, but, but at the end of the day, um, and, and that would be great. But at the end of the day, you know what? I'm healthy. Um, I'm, I've got a roof over my head. Uh, sure, I'm not flying and I'm not doing those things that I love. And, and I've had to reimagine this whole TV thing through the w help of networks and all of that. Um, and, and so that's a good thing. I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, and, and hopefully the airlines, I, th I think they're going to do something, uh, but that's only my gut. I'm, I'm not, you would probably have more contacts and, and firsthand knowledge of that. I can only go by my gut. I think they, I, I think they will, because here, obviously, with BA we're, and even Virgin, we're just not able to fly right now, and um, and there are a lot of loyal customers who want to stick with that. If I didn't have the status, I can say this: I probably would have gone for a lot of these Virgin deals that came up because Virgin has led the way and and taken the risk to you know with insurance <laughs> added in, uh, you know with bonus if they cancel you know points if they cancel it and all that but but my loyalty to British Airways because of that status I've worked hard to get has prevented me from going on another airline so so fingers crossed and uh I'll cry if it doesn't happen a little bit um but then we'll figure out what the next move is at that point but but I'm hoping that they'll do something and do it soon <laughs> Yeah, I, I, they'll do something. I think it's just a question of what. I mean, one of the, the problems, that obviously, for redesigned gold guest lists as well, one of the, the issues we had is the gold guest list, the first time you qualify, you have to get 5,000 tier points. Yes. After that, you can maintain it for 3,000, but you don't get Concord room access. So I right. think for a lot of gold guest list people, it's the thought that if you lose it, you've then got to start getting back to the 5,000 tier points, which I think we all accept travel's not going to recover, but you know, yeah. properly for a few years, even business travel, you know, is probably going to be at least another 18 months before it gets anywhere close to, to normality. So it's it's some sort of concession that you don't have to lose it and then start again at a time where it's it's going to be difficult to travel anyway, even when we're legally allowed to. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I agree with you. I think that's a great point. And, and, and furthermore, it, you know, if you're gold guest list, I believe if you don't, if, if you don't make that, and, and in this case, if we're not flying and not even making tier points to gold, <laughs> you do a soft landing to silver <laughs> at yeah. that point. If I'm, if, is that correct? That's correct, and that's one hell of a drop. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah, it is one hell of a drop. <laughs> um, and, and that, that, that I would be, uh, that would, that would hurt. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would, uh, I would cry. I would uh, go into my stash of good champagne and, <laughs> and uh, probably drink myself silly. So, so yes, I'm, I, I would like to see, uh, going back to your question, do I think they've done enough? I think they did really well last year. Um, who, I hope they do. Uh, I hope they're equivalent to this year and, and really put some thought into it and, and make some, you know, good decisions with it. Um, because, because I know you want to be up in the air as much as I do. And I know everyone in our, in our Facebook group, you know, which is what now over a thousand people in that Facebook oh, group, two and a half thousand, yeah. two and a half thousand, just in that one. And then yeah. you have all these other ones. Um, we all, you know, we did a Zoom the other night, a uh, little uh, uh, aviation quiz with some of the folks in our group, and uh, we all want to be there. So, yeah, hopefully it will happen soon. <laughs> I hope so. So let's let's stick with that theme. When we're allowed to travel, assuming that um, if there's a big bang, we know that's not going to happen. Say so there's a big bang, right. and then all the restrictions are lifted, everybody's vaccinated, we're all happy to travel where would be the first few places that you went for pleasure rather than obviously you're not work trips that you will have to go on? Where would you want to go? Is there somewhere that you've been before you'd love to go back to or somewhere new that you've always wanted to travel to? Yeah, so on my way to where I'm going to tell you I'd like to go or either on the way back home here to London, um, the first, probably on the way, the first thing that I would do when we're in that magical everything opens scenario uh, 
it would be to go see my family in America, to see my parents. I'm, I, I'm very blessed that they're, even though I'm ancient, um, <laughs> they are still alive and in great shape. Uh, they wish that they could be on a plane over here coming to London to see myself and my partner. And uh, while it's great to video, uh, call them several times a week. Uh, I really, really, really miss them. And, and so that, and, and with the joy of having traveled over to the States, you know, for the last few years, every three weeks, I didn't see them on every one of those trips, but it was very easy for me uh, to build in trips to see them, uh, stop to see them. So that, that would be the first thing. Uh, I think, uh, so where I would like to go for fun, and I have been there, but it's been many, many years, and I know it's one of your favorite places, New Britain about it, uh, Hawaii. <laughs> I, I, I would love to go back to Hawaii. My partner who's English, he has never been to Hawaii. I should say my husband, my husbro, um, has never been to Hawaii, and, uh, and, and I just know he would love that. So, so that would be a place, and I'm a I'm a huge fan of Miami Beach and Miami. I really love the culture there. It's, uh, that would be a place. And then one other place would be New Orleans, you know, especially with BA, that direct flight. Uh, New Orleans is one of my favorite places. I'm a real foodie. Um, and to me, it's probably my favorite city in the world to go to eat. In fact, before I've even booked hotels, after I book the flights when I go to New Orleans, the next thing I book, regardless of where I'm staying, is where I'm going to eat. And that means breakfast and dinner, definitely, and sometime lunch is pre-booked in also. <laughs> well, next time I go, I definitely need to take more advice. That was the, the two places you mentioned, actually, Miami Beach and New Orleans, were my last two international trips before lockdown oh. happened on the same trip. Yeah, so next Well, let's we go together. To We'll yeah. go together and then I'll show you all my foodie places. <laughs> Perfect. That sounds like a good plan. I'd be up for that. <laughs> so that uh, brings us to a, a close, I think, uh, looking at uh, some optimistic things there, hopefully for the future. And um, thank you very much, Patrick, for joining me. It's been great chatting to you. Yeah, no, th again, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your party today. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. I, I always enjoy our time together. And uh, I'm, I am uh, just a huge fan of turning left for less. Uh, it's there, you know, there, there are so many bloggers out there. And there are three or four blogs that I follow religiously. And yours is one of those that every day. Every time my email, you know, I've got you set up where I get the daily alerts for the emails. Um, I, you're, you're like one of the first that I read, even before I'm out of bed. I spend 30 minutes in the morning going over news and reading on my iPad. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. And I appreciate you taking the time to read me. Yeah, thanks. Thank thanks for helping me save money. That's what you've done <laughs> with that. <laughs>